right now we are going to start adding our hand worked eyelets to our center back. You'll remember that when we added our boning to our center back, we added one along the center back and another three quarters of an inch away. So I'm just working on my scrap fabric again to show you how this uh, works. But you'll be adding these hand worked eyelets spaced evenly down your center back on each side of your corset um, so that you can lace your corset up in the back. Now, if you see here, you can see that these eyelets are hand worked right through the fabric. And the best part is that they often look as pretty on the front as they do on the back. Now I'm going to show two methods today. One is going to be using a jump ring, which is what I did in this one here, and not using a jump ring, which is what I did in this one here. Now up close they look a little bit different, but pretty much the same. The beauty of the jump ring is that it helps keep your uh, stitches spaced evenly, and you do end up with a much more satin-like raised uh, type of design when you do it uh, using a jump ring here. If you don't use a jump ring, um, you have to be a lot more attention, uh, attention to detail oriented so that you have very even stitches and also so that all of them are evenly spaced around um, making a nice circle. Now that's really hard to do without a guide like a jump ring. So the jump ring will actually act as a, a helpful aid if you decide to go that route. But otherwise, you can work without a jump ring, and that's totally fine. So, for doing these handworked eyelets, you're going to need a few things. Uh, one is you're going to need embroidery floss, just like we did for flossing the uh, bones in our corset. And now you can choose to use the same embroidery floss or another complementary color. Ideally, you want to match uh, your hand sewn details together um, for cohesion and continuity. But it's completely up to you if you want to use a different color, that's okay as well. Um, you'll want to just kind of try to stick with a general theme or colorway for your corset. Um, you're also going to need your trusty awl or your stabby pokey stick um, for making the initial holes for these eyelets. You're also going to want to have a pencil to mark where these eyelets are going to go. And now there's a chart on D2L that'll show you how to evenly space these down your center back. So be sure to look at that before proceeding to this. And I would also suggest if you have time to do a sample eyelet in a piece of scrap fabric so that you have an idea of what you're doing before you start doing it on your final corset. Um, just in case you make any mistakes, it's good to have a little practice. The other thing that you'll need are your scissors, as well as a sharp hand sewing needle. And just like we did the flossing, you're going to take your embroidery floss, you're going to cut a length that is about as long as your arm from fingertip to, el to uh, armpit, basically. And you're going to split it like we did in our flossing demo so that you're working with two strands of thread from your whole strand here. So you can actually get three eyelets out of each strand that you cut of embroidery floss. You're going to thread those through your needle and then we're going to get started. Okay, so before you move on to this step, the first thing you're going to want to do is look at D2L and you're going to want to make sure that you space your markings for your uh, hand worked eyelets with your ruler and making small pencil marks on the outside of your corset um, to indicate where you're going to place your hand worked eyelets. So you're going to space those on um, just as described on D2L. Um, and then you're going to take your awl and you're actually going to bore a hole through the layers of your fabric or your cutile, which will be quite thick. So make sure that you're using a nice sharp awl and then you are going to start working your handworked eyelets. It's good before you make the hole to have your needle um, threaded with your embroidery floss and knotted at the end. We're working with a single strand or a um, two strands of the embroidery floss thread, but we're not doubling our thread. We're going to leave one tail longer than the other and just not the longer one. Um, and that's how we're going to sew our handworked eyelets. Otherwise they get a little bit too thick if we double over our thread. So it's good to have that on standby because a lot of the times the threads after we make our holes will start to slip back together. So we want to make sure that we are keeping that hole nice and open um, for as long as possible 
as we're working our handwork stitches. So you're going to take your awl and you're going to bore a hole through that marking and you're going to try and make it as nice and defined as possible. So I'm just sticking my awl through there and I'm kind of twisting it as I go because I want to make sure that I'm really pushing those threads around and I'm really getting them out of the way. So there, now I've got my hole. And now you're ready to start hand working your stitches. And you can actually start by taking your thread and coming up from the inside or underneath side of the hole that you've made in your fabric here. So I'm just going to insert my needle like so, pulling it all the way through. And the first thing I want to do is make a star shape of buttonhole stitches around my edges just to keep that hole open enough so I can start working all my stitches around it. So I'm going into the hole and coming back outside of the hole, stitching about an eighth of an inch away from where I've made that hole here. And as I come through, I'm actually going to not pull it super tight yet because I want to go through that loop and pull it nice and tight. Now what I'm doing is basically a buttonhole stitch and I'm going to space my, my stitches about an eighth of an inch apart all the way around the hole. So as you can see here, there's my second stitch. I'm going to do them like that all the way around so that I have spaced stitches all the way around. All these threads are doing at this point is anchoring points around the hole that I've made with my awl, keeping it open so that it doesn't close and become misshapen as I start adding my satin buttonhole stitches all the way around like this one. So you're just going to keep working around that hole, going in, coming out about an eighth of an inch away from your first stitch, catching it and making another stitch, rotating. And it will be difficult with the cutile because the cutile is so thick. So do use an awl to really um, protect your hands because this will be uh, tedious and you will have a lot of them to sew. So you will be doing this for a little while. It's always great to watch Netflix or your favorite movie, something to kind of have on in the background because you will be sitting here doing this for a while. So make sure that you're comfortable and you can always brew a nice cup of tea. It can be a really fun and relaxing process of, uh, of hand working. And you want to make it enjoyable for yourself too. So I'm nearing the end of my round here of what basically looks like an asterisk. So it, it just kind of looks like an asterisk or a spread out star here of stitches. And all they're doing is holding that hole open for me. Now at this point, if you wanted to, you could just go in and just again, in between all your stitches here, just kind of remove all those stitches apart with your awl, making your hole nice and defined again. And you can just make sure that you pull all your stitches nice and tight. Because now we're going to work all the way around this hole with all of our stitches touching, doing the exact same stitch so that we get to this point here. Now, if you use a jump ring, you'll get a more satin-like finish over here. This one looks a little bit more bumpy. Both are completely acceptable. I just find with the jump ring you get a much more defined circle than you do without one. But I understand that that um, didn't come in the kit, so if you wanted to purchase jump rings, it's totally fine. And if not, um, you, you don't have to use them, but they are pretty helpful. So that is completely up to you. Now I'm going to start by showing you how this works without a jump ring, and then I'll do another one with a jump ring. All you're doing at this point now is you are working all the way around that hole in a button stitch, pulling your thread towards the outside of your eyelet. If you pull the thread towards the middle, you get all your bumps around the middle of the hole, and that ends up making it really hard to get your laces through. So make sure that for every stitch you come up through, you pull your threads 
away in that buttonhole stitch. That way all of your bumps here are sitting towards the outside and not closer to the hole. So I'll do another one nice and close up to the camera here. Pulling it all the way until I have just a loop. Then I'm going through that loop and I'm pulling it away from that eyelet. And now I'm going to go all the way around. You want to make sure every time you bring your needle back down through the eyelet, you're bringing it through that big hole in between all of the stitches you made originally. You don't want to be going into the edge of your fabric or into any of your stitches. You're going through that deep, completely open hole that you made with the awl. Otherwise, if you go into those stitches, you're going to start to um, narrow the space that your lacing can go through. So you want to keep that as clear as possible. You're constantly trying to pull that hole open with every stitch that you make. So you want to make sure they're nice and tight and you go all the way around the outside. Now you're going to work them as close together as that all the way around until this is completely full all the way around and you'll end up at this point with something like this. Now I'm going to work all the way around here until I get back to this point and then I'm going to show you how to finish off your thread. So keep working in this circle until you get to here and then when you get to here I will be showing you how you knot it off. Okay so as you can see here I am just pulling through the last of my buttonhole stitch around the eyelet that I've just sewn. What I want to do is I want to make one more eyelet stitch. So I am going to come up through my hole. I'm going to come, I'm going to bring my needle to the point where I'm pulling my thread through that buttonhole here. And you want to make sure that your tail of your thread is not caught in this. So make sure that you have your loop there and you're basically going through that loop like you would for your regular buttonhole stitch that we've been doing all the way around. But now instead of just going through that hole one time like I've done, you're actually going to go through it again a second time. So now you've gone through that hole twice and you're going to pull that nice and tight to the outside. That's actually creating a knot there. And all you have to do now is sink your needle either in between the layers of fabric close to here, or you can actually sink your needle through your satin buttonhole stitches to hide your tail, and then snip your thread off nice and close. Now you've got your hand sewn buttonhole done. Now that's the one without the eyelet or uh, sorry, the one without the jump ring. Um, and it looks very similar to the one that I did right here. Now, if you want to get one that looks a little bit more like this with a much more defined ridge and circle, you're going to need a jump ring. Now, jump rings are generally sold in a large quantity. This is a bag of them here. You'll just need a few for your center back. So you can always grab a bag and split it with some friends. Um, some great places to find them are Michael's. You can also find them um, on Queen West at places like Art on Beads. Um, any jewelry making supply store should have them. Uh, they're pretty popular. But also what you wanna make sure is that your jump ring's not too big for the hole that you are making here. So mine are approximately um, a little over an eighth. They're not quite um, big enough to be a quarter inch, but anywhere between an eighth and a quarter would be fine because you want to aim for the same size as the hole um, that you're making with the awl that you are putting into the fabric. So you're going to go through the first few steps of the first eyelet. You're going to first take your awl, sink it down into the marking for your buttonhole, make it nice and defined. And then you're going to thread up a needle and you're going to do that initial star that we did, like the asterisk. And then once you get to that point, I'll show you how we add the jump ring and move around it. Okay, so at this point, you should have a nice asterisk of uh, stitching sewn around 
the um, hole that you made with your awl. And this is the first step you're going to take just like you did with your um, other eyelet without the jump ring before you uh, add the jump ring to this uh, hand worked eyelet. Now with the jump ring what you want to do is make sure that you place the jump ring right on top of where your stitches are and then you're going to work those stitches around the jump ring and through the jump ring. Okay, so to add your jump ring, you're then going to take your jump ring that you have. So I've got mine from my bag right here. So there it is. And I'm just going to place it over where that hole is with the stitching. So that's it sitting right on top of it there. What I want to do now is take my needle, go through the jump ring, and through the hole that I've made with my awl and my fabric. And I'm going to come up just like I've been doing for all my stitching uh, before. And I'm going to pull that loop through like so. And then I'm doing my buttonhole um, locking stitch by going through that loop, pulling it tightly and pulling my um, my loop away from the buttonhole, making sure that all those bumps live on the outside still. So now I've locked my jump ring right there to my eyelet. Now I'm going to continue to go through the jump ring and through the hole, pull my, pull my thread through, and again I'm making all of my buttonhole stitches in the same direction here, pulling that thread away. And you continue to rotate and do this all the way around until you're back at the beginning. What you'll notice about using the jump ring is that instead of having to guess how tight to pull your thread or um, gauge kind of the the width of your stitches, the jump ring kind of does that for you. It also sort of acts as a guide um, for how far you should be stitching your holes away, or sorry, stitching your stitches away um, from the hole that you made with your awl. So that's how it's looking right now. That's sort of the beginning of it. I know it doesn't look like much. But basically that's the beginning of my satin stitches or my buttonhole stitches going around one quarter of that ring. And then we just continue. So make sure that you're pulling all of your stitch stitches away from the hole um, so that your tail is pulling towards the outside of your handworked eyelet. And you're just going to keep doing that all the way around. Okay, so as you can see here, I have worked my hand stitches all the way around my jump ring, giving it that beautiful satin stitch, a lot of nice definition going on in there in terms of the shape of my hand worked eyelet. Now I'm going to tie off my thread and this eyelet will be finished. So just like you've been going around before, all the way around, you're going to do the same thing again with your last stitch. You're going to work it just like you did your other stitches. You're going to sink your needle into the eyelet hole and you're going to come out on the other side there. You're going to pull through and actually I think this one might need one extra stitch so um, we'll pull one through and we'll do that and now so again we'll go into the eyelet so I'm just gonna work a little longer tail here in through the eyelet out through the fabric edge just like we've been doing this whole time and catching my needle in the loop and pulling it through now before I go down I go all the way tight I'm going through that same loop a second time so I'm actually going through that loop two times I'm pulling it down away from uh, the handworked eyelets so that it's not lives on the outer edge where the other um, buttonhole kind of bumps are living 
And then I'm taking my thread and I'm sinking it through my stitches. So all I've done is I've ta taken my needle and I've worked it through the stitches over here, just kind of underneath and through the satin stitches. So my needle is, is buried under there. Now I'm going to push it just through and pull it out. So that is actually my finished eyelet there. And all I have to do now is cut the tail of my thread off nice and close to the eyelet. And all I've done is I've knotted my thread and kind of hidden the tail of my knot underneath these stitches. So it doesn't look like there's any knot at all, which is really nice. Okay, so that is the finished handworked eyelet that I've done. And if you compare it to the other one, it does have just a little bit more definition and uniformity in terms of it being kind of a perfect circle. Now, you don't have to use the jump ring uh, to do your handworked eyelets. These are perfectly acceptable. But if you wanted to, um, and I do suggest trying it, it just, uh, it might make your life a little easier when you go to sew them. Um, the handwork eyelets will take a while. Um, you'll have to do them up and down each center back panel. So you want to be prepared to be doing this for a little while. Don't rush it at the last minute. Um, especially if you want to just take your time and get these kind of really nice defined edges and making sure that all of them kind of look uniform all the way down. Um, that's ideal. So just make sure that you're taking your time with this. You're not leaving it till the last minute. It is a really nice um, kind of relaxing thing to do at home um, or in the studio. You can even, you know, have a little get together about it, like a hand sewing party. Um, I really love hand sewing. So for me, this is a really nice relaxing time. Um, but it uh, goes pretty smoothly after the first one. You will pick up pace as you move to the next ones. Uh, the first one will probably take the longest. But be sure to do a sample on a piece of scrap fabric kind of like this uh, before you move on to doing it on your actual corset, just so that you have a feel for the technique. And uh, that's it. Once you have your flossing and your uh, handworked eyelets done, you've completed your corset. The last thing that'll be left to do is lace it up um, and try it on. Okay, uh, so have a good week five.